Hi guys and welcome to this our video on lines with only one intercept. Is that actually possible? Is it possible to do a line with one intercept? Well of course it is, I've got a video. Well, it will do in a minute when I've recorded it. Anyway, my name's Darren Matsguru, and it is an absolute pleasure seeing you here today. No, I can't see you at all, but I'm hoping if you will. Anyway, my name's Darren Matsguru. Thank you very much for joining me. This video is going to cover what I say here with our learning objectives. But before I get into that rubbish uh, stuff, can you do me a favor and subscribe? That little click on that little button, so little effort on your part. But what it does do is tell me that you're watching. Leave comments below through the videos. I love getting comments, so long as they're good ones. I mean, come on, guys, be nice. So very few people watch mass videos. It just, just makes it so much more worthwhile if you click that little button. Okay, so as I say there, what are our learning objectives? And to understand what it means to be a horizontal or vertical line. We know what they are. The lines only have one axis instead of these particular lines. If you think about a horizontal line, it's only going to cut a set of axes once. Likewise with a vertical line. Be able to sketch these things. And a sketch is very different from a plot. Understand that lines can cross through the origin, yes, and be able to sketch lines that pass through the origin. All right, so in previous videos, what have we noticed? Well, we were dealing with the idea that if I gave you an equation 2x plus 3y equals 6, and we put x equals 0 into that equation and y equals 0 into that equation, then what we were really doing was we were finding our x and y intercepts. And they are really, really important to us because later on, everything's going to be about the y-axis intercept. But for now, we were saying, well, they gave us two points, two points that we could effectively join together to draw our straight line. And the reason we use this is because all the points along the y-axis have an x value of zero. And all of the points along the x-axis have a y value of zero. And we love zero because it just gets rid of things. Now, if you didn't understand a word of what I've just said, why don't you load up my other videos on mathsguru.com or YouTube and just see, I explain a load of stuff that hopefully will make the rest of these videos in this series just make sense. Let's look at vertical lines. Right, a vertical line is really, really awesome. And once you get it in your head, it's easy. So what I've done is I've used my favorite software program, desmos.com, to allow me to plot these points. Now, if we look at my table here, it's a little bit odd, isn't it? Because I've got my x column first and then my y column. So what I'm saying is here, my x value of 3, my y value of minus 3. So let's see where that is. x value of 3 across and 3 down puts me at this point here. Okay? 3 across and 2 down puts me at that point there. 3 across, 1 down puts me at that point there and that point there. Now, if I write these in a slightly different way using coordinates, I wonder if you're going to suddenly work out what the equation of this line is. So this point here is 3 minus 3. This point here is 3 minus 2. This point here, 3 minus 1. 3, 0. 3, 1. 3, 2. 3, 3. Yeah, uh, your sound's not wrong. That's just me messing with your head. But hopefully what you notice is every single one of the coordinates along that line, if I was to join that together in a really, really chunky line, I noticed that every single one of those coordinates has an x value that is 3. Doesn't matter what the y value is. The y value could be 943,260,000. No, you can't. Doesn't matter what the y value is. Every single point along that line has an x coordinate of 3. And so lo and behold, guess what we label that? Yep, that particular line there would have an equation x equals 3. Vertical lines start with an x equals and whatever number it crosses on my intercept. Absolutely. So if I was to draw a line here then, what do we notice? One, it's not a line. Please don't judge. Two, it's supposed to go through the value of one. Again, please don't judge. Every single coordinate point on that line would have an x value that was equal to one. Don't care what the y value is. And bearing in mind, or believe it or not, that actually is how you label vertical lines. So these lines here are all examples. x equals minus 3. That would be a horizontal line over here somewhere. x equals 4 would be over there. x equals 0. Where on earth is x equals 0 going to be? Well, actually, that one there is the trick one. That is the y-axis, OMG. And that comes in really handy a little bit later on. 
What about horizontal lines? Now, if you want, try and pause the video now and see whether you can work out what the equation of that horizontal line is. Bearing in mind, guys, everything I write on here can be downloaded from mathsguru.com. These PowerPoints, everything I write on, you can download, put in your summary book, or just have handy somewhere. So, let me see. I'm going to write the coordinate value of that one. That is minus 3, comma, 2. This one here is minus 2, comma, 2. Minus 1, comma, 2. 0, comma, 2. 1, comma, 2. 2, comma, 2. 2. Again, it's not gone wrong, but again, what do you notice? For all of these points along that line there, it does not matter one iota, one jot, what the x value is, every single y value is 2. Absolutely, so every y value is equal to 2, and there we go, that is my horizontal line. Now, can you see where we get tricked with these type of things? Yeah? Me too. Because we normally expect horizontal lines have an x in it, don't we? Because this is the x-axis, and that's always horizontal, and this is the y-axis, and they're always vertical, but not. For these questions, it's counterintuitive. It does the opposite of what you're expecting. So a horizontal straight line begins with y equals, and all you need to do is see where it cuts the y-axis. That is your value of y equals in this situation 2. So if I had a straight line going through there, Hey, my straight line is getting even better. What would I notice? Well, where does it cross my intercept? It crosses at 1. And so in that situation, my horizontal line would be y equals 1. Now, basically, that's it for pretty much those horizontal and vertical lines. Remember them, you, you won't go wrong. But there are other lines that actually pass through the intercepts just once or just cross through once. And that's at this point here. And again, hopefully you're aware that that point there is called the origin, and that has nothing to do with the electricity company in Australia. What we notice is that every single one of these lines only goes through that point there once. It cuts the intercepts just once. Others, if you remember, may cut twice. We may have a cutting point there and a cutting point there, but not these. They cut once at the origin. Now, we're going to deal with a lot of those a little bit later on, but I just thought it was important to note now that we actually use them. And there are lots of tricks that we can employ in maths to try and just throw you off the scent to test your understanding. Because maths isn't about regurgitation, right? That's what birds do for their baby chicks. Ooh. But the point of it is here, we are now looking at an intersection. Where do lines intersect? Well, they intersect where they meet. So what I've done here is I've given you two lines. One line is x equals 2, and another line is y equals 4. And I've gone, OK, where do they intersect? Now, some of you may well just need to sketch these. You do a quick sketch here, and you go, x equals 2, that's that way. No, it's not. Tricked you, it's that way. So you draw the line x equals 2, and you go, well, that's going to go through 2. And every one of these points along that line is going to have an x value of 2. And then you go to y equals 4, and you're going to go, well, OK, y equals 4 is there. That's going to go through 4. Every single one, and you're going to say, well, that meets there. Ah. Well, if it meets, what do we notice? The x value is 2 and the y value is 4. So I didn't need to draw the graph because you'd already told me in code that they're going to meet where the x value is 2 and the y value is 4. So for that one there, I could have just written down 2 comma 4, ka-ching, and I'm done. All right? So it doesn't matter. So if I gave you x was equal to 7 and y was equal to minus 3, where do they meet? Hopefully, you've just said 7 minus 3. Absolutely, because this line here, every x value is 7. This line here, every y value is minus 3. And that one place that they meet is going to have an x value of 7 and a y value of negative 3. Now, we're going to spend a lot of time for the rest of the course. This is a little bit of a, uh, a, little bit of a sort of spoiler for the rest of the course. But we're going to spend a lot of time teaching you how to do math in one direction. And, uh, and we need you to then learn how to reverse it. Now, I'm going to show you how to reverse it in my videos. But sadly, a lot of teachers don't. Well, how would you find the equation of that following graph? Now, you may already know. And again, this is a bit of a spoiler. But one of the most important things we need to know is where any line crosses the x-axis. So in this situation here, that line, because it crosses through the origin, that gives me one very, very important information. So that intercept, and in fact, more importantly, 
my y-intercept becomes really, really important. Something else we know about straight lines is that actually they slope. We can go from a straight line through to a vertical line and in between, yes? But they don't just slope up, they can slope down as well. So we have to have some way of describing these questions in terms of a slope. And actually, we call that the gradient. Now, again, if you cycle or whatever else, you well, you'll already know that because roads have gradients. How do we find the gradient? Well, again, interestingly, all I ever need to know is two points on the line. If I know two points on the line, I can find my gradient. If I can read off that value there where it crosses on the y-axis, I have my gradient. And believe it or not, that just means that I can use the equation y equals mx plus c to help me. Now, you're going to turn around and say, what on earth? And again, it's a spoiler. But this here, that value of c is my y-intercept. And that value of m there is my gradient. And as I say, in my later videos, I'm going to show you how to find the gradient. So that's coming soon. I'm pretty much done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it's been useful. All right, so horizontal lines, vertical lines, more on that coming soon in my gradient video. But I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and tell your mates. Actually, your mates, knowing I'm around, may also help. It could be helping them. You could help your mate to get better at maths. That's a good thing, isn't it? Gets you invited to parties. Now I'm showing my age. All right, take care, guys. I'll see you again soon. Maths Guru, signing out.